Good morning, good morning, good morning. What's up, everybody? Morning, good afternoon, <coughs> good evening, wherever you may be in the world. This is Brendan Isaiah Bankston coming to you live on Pixelogic's Twitch channel with the smooth vibrations of human anatomy. <laughs> What's up, everybody? All right. Hope everybody's doing good. Today, we are going to continue um, with uh, my yearly anatomy study. <coughs> um, if you guys didn't get a chance to hang out the uh, last two rounds, um, we started out with just uh, the typical included Ryan Kingsland skeleton uh, that comes with ZBrush. This is a really good base uh, to start from. It comes in, I think, Tool? Yeah, here we go. And just Ryan Kingsling Anatomy. This is a, um, a great place to start from. Uh, the original is uh, a, female ana a female anatomy. So I took, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Still trying to get over a cough, so I may um, I may mute myself and cough here a couple of times during the stream. Anyways, uh, there are some uh, structural differences between a female skeleton uh, and a male skeleton. So basically, what I did was I turned the hips back in, I widened the um, rib cage a little bit, and uh, brought the shoulders out a touch. That was pretty much it. And I think actually for um, the tool, the legs were coming in more, so I just rotated them out at that ball joint. Um, and that was pretty much it. That's how I got the skeleton. And then from there, um, first round we did just the form defining muscles, uh, just really quickly, uh, of the torso and a little bit into the arm. And then, last one, uh, we did the form-defining muscles of the face. Um, so you're welcome to go back on uh, the ZBrush Live uh, page under um, my section and go back and watch those if you're interested. Um, or I think it's on the YouTube, your Pixelogic YouTube page. Uh, I believe it's on there. But today, uh, we're going to work on mostly the thigh, the buttocks, and we may, depending on how much time we have, we may get into uh, blocking in uh, the calf muscles. All right. So, um, that's what we're going to do. So, the important thing is to uh, realize we're just going to be focusing on the form defining muscles so whatever we're gonna see on the outside um, as for like all the small little like the adductor muscles that that come in here um, we're not gonna worry about those probably just generalize some of those forms um, but for the most part we'll uh, focus on just the form defining ones and so let's do it um, so from my reference I just use Google so that you guys can also um, have access to the same references that, uh, that I do. So usually what I do will be um, something general. Um, so in this case, leg anatomy muscle. And then I always try to do insertion points in my uh, searches so that it'll tell me things like this, where like <coughs> sartorius muscle um, starts at the iliac crest, goes all the way down, and then connects down here to just under the head of the tibia. So this is all really, really good info. All right, this is for the calf, but that's the solace. See, this one is really good for getting um, the quads. So the quads are mainly, um, at least the front portion of the leg is made up of three main groups, right? The vastus medius, which is the one that comes inside the leg. So this is this is your 
uh, silhouette value on the inside of the leg. This is the one that runs overneath both of them. Overneath? I think I just made up a new word. Overneath. 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 <laughs> um, actually, I think you could make that word work. Yeah, anyways. Uh, and then the vastus lateralis, which uh, comes on the outside silhouette of the of the thigh. It's important to note um, where these uh, start and where they end, or ver verse visa. These ones are really cool, too, if you can find um, something like this, where it'll show all of them together. But I'll also show you where they connect. This is really super, super, super helpful. And so uh, we'll focus on these four muscles. Uh, the sartorius, uh, the rectus femoris, which is the middle one, the vastus medialis, which is the inside one, and the vastus lateralis, which is the outside one. Cool, so I'm just going to have this over here, and let's get to town. Overneath. <laughs> overneath. I think overneath actually could work. Somewhere in the veins of like where within, you know? I think it could work. I think I think we could make an argument for it. <laughs> Alright, so well let's start with um the vastus lateralis. Actually, let's start with the, yeah, let's start with the vastus lateralis, and then the vastus medius, and then over top we'll do the rectus femoris. Okay. Actually, what I'm going to do is, if you guys are interested to follow along, I'll just throw the Google uh, search in there, so that you can have it. You can have it. Take it. Crap, I just lost it. There it is. No, nope, that's not the one. Oh, I'm getting my reference back up. Where did it go? Sometimes you have too much reference. And then you lose the one that you really like. Okay, there it is. Got it. Okay, um, so... <clears throat> What I have been doing is just using insert. So I do brush, insert, IMM primitives. And then I'll just use uh, a sphere. Because I'm going to end up dynameshing it anyways. Overneath. Okay. Uh, vastus lateralis um, starts, connects just uh, on the greater trochanter of the femur, and then runs down. Let's see. And connects. Where does it connect to? Okay. So, uh, from the greater trochanter, runs down. It looks like it connects to the patella, actually. Insertion point, quadriceps tendon. Okay, we'll do that. Alright, so then I'll just maybe throw this in there or something like that, and then we'll do split on mass points. Alright, the mesh is partly hidden. There we go. Okay, we we'll go back to this dude. And then let's just move this guy around here. Oh, is that his eyeballs that I took? Oh. No, that was old. All right. So let's do this. We'll do delete hidden. There we go. There we go. All right, so then usually I'll throw, you know, wherever the main meat of the muscle is. 
somewhere around here like this. And then we'll just Dynamesh it. And I want to pull these out. I'll have a bait, just a basic shape, and I can smooth this down, pull it out a little bit. Probably should go a little bit lower. Maybe we'll do um, 28, uh, 56 maybe? Let's try that. This might be better, around 56, just to try to get the shape in there. Okay, so this is going to come back, hook up to there. And this is going to come in towards the patella here. And then we can use inflate on other areas to kind of bring some of that back. Another thing I, I like uh, doing is um, just doing a quick Google search for like bodybuilder legs. All right, so it's important to to look at um, you know the actual muscles, but it's important to look at them uh, with skin over them as well. Right, so here we are. This is the fastest uh, lateralis. This is the fastest medius, and this is the um, rectus femoris. Right, really all depends on how big you're gonna go, but now you can start to understand where those insert um, and what lays on top of each other, you know? Even from here, you can see, like, just the minor forms, right? Lateralis, I mean, uh, medius lateralis, so on and so forth. It gets even crazier. That's nuts. Okay, get the idea here. How's everybody doing out there? Is everybody uh, still awake? You guys awake? Following along, possibly. Um, I think it's applicable to all. Um, I think mostly um, having believable proportions is probably the best, uh, you know, the most important. And then from there, being able, knowing what those muscles do in animation, how they flex and relax. Um, so I think it's equally important to both, actually. If you're doing animation, you need to know, um, you know, what those, what those muscles are doing and what the forms are doing, um, when they move and contract, right? So I think it's super important for both, actually. All right, so I'm just going to dupe this one and move it over. So let's just dupe this dude. Okay, so let's look at... Um, Vastus medialis. <coughs> So it's going to do pretty much the same thing. It's going to connect just on the inside of the curve um, between uh, the socket and the greater trochanter there. Coffee part is 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 important for sure. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just gonna come down. So a lot of times I'm not too worried about the exact placement um, right off the bat. Sometimes it takes uh, being able to get all of them together and then just kind of like fiddling with them a little bit. Maybe let's move this up to like a hundred. Like it's not quite enough there. 
move this up to 100. That's a little bit better. Okay. So, let's bring these back in. So that's going to sit something like this. So the other thing that I really want to uh, focus on while I'm uh, putting these into place is uh, the silhouette, right? Let's see if we can go back to these bodybuilders real quick. Let's see if I can get a good one. That isn't too crazy. Maybe we could just do thigh muscle. Sometimes when you do bodybuilder um, searches, it's just like too much, you know? Okay, this one, this one's actually pretty good. So one of the ones that you want to focus on is um, the silhouette. So on the outside, like, where does it come out the most? On the inside, where, out, you know, you've got kind of like this two, like this bump here, and then this one as it goes down into the knee, right? But this one terminates, like, way more up here. So we've got, like, this nice, like, uh, alternating um, silhouette value where it comes out here, but in here, this is the most inner part. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, let's see if this one does it. Yeah, same thing. So we got out, in, out, right? So it's kind of like this alternating thing. Does that make sense? Okay, this one we'll get back to in a minute. So like where it, okay, cool. Good, it does make sense, good. So, Silhouette wise, all right. So this comes up here, but this one, actually, the bulk of it is a little bit more. Like this, right? So the outside, oops. Yeah, something like that. All right, let's just let's move on to the next one. So let's dupe this guy. And sometimes if you feel like things aren't quite sitting right, instead of duping these, I figure I found that um, it may be better to just start from. Uh, the sphere, the insert sphere, every time instead of from these shapes, because you can kind of get stuck into a particular shape that sometimes it may be hard to get out of. <coughs> okay, so the Rectus femoris connects right around there. The majority this is going to actually come in, get thinner in here. And the majority of the bulk of the muscle is here. <laughs> it looks like a balloon a balloon animals. <laughs> it's okay. Let's actually thin this down. It's okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. It's all about placement first and then we'll fine tune later. There we go. Starting to get there. Okay. So there are what's next? That's the question. 
<clears throat> so we got those three main ones. All right, so we got Vastus, Medius, Lateralis, and... Actually, that's Vastus Intermedius, but that actually sits underneath the um, Rectus Formaris. Which is this one here, Rectus Formaris. Okay, uh, Sartorius is actually this one. So this one's really interesting in that it's like a very, very thin muscle. It's like tape, basically. Um, but that runs all the way from uh, the superior anterior prominence of the iliac spine. Runs all the way down over and around uh, the base of the femur and connects down to the tibia. Just underneath the head. This one's this one'll be a little bit more tough. So while we're doing that, let's actually on these shapes just a little bit more. <clears throat> this guy's got a really high iliac crest. Really high. Damn, son. Okay. So let's do. Let's just grab one of these guys. Let's dupe this dude again. Yeah, I think that mm, we're going to take a look at the um, skeleton on this dude just to make sure that when I was doing the proportions, things weren't super crazy. Yeah, what's up, Ashen? How you doing, buddy? What I'm looking at is where the greater trochanter usually sits in relation to uh, the front part of the iliac crest. Right. What I'm concerned about right now is that is the... Are the hips too far in? Did I bring them too far in? Um, and does the greater trochanter sit too far out from where this is? Good, Ashen. How you doing, buddy? Oh man, Zebra Summit was amazing. Amaze. All the amaze balls. I can't wait already for next year. That's how amazing it was. As always. Um, let's look at human skeleton. Okay, here's what I'm interested in. <coughs> um, let's, let's say human male skeleton, though. Not shop. I don't want to shop. What's up, Seagull? How you doing, man? Alright, so here's what I'm looking at. So. This is pretty a lot shorter than mine. If we're looking here, right, and where the greater trochanter sits in relation to, say, um, the shoulder joint, and how far out it comes from the iliac crest. So this one looks like. Of course, everybody's different though, but I, I like looking at averages. Eh, that's not bad. Of course, these are other people's interpretations as well, so that's always kind of hard to tell. I just kind of want to take this stuff as a grain of salt. Because it's interpret interpretations of interpretations of interpretations. Um, Actually, um, I haven't got into Zygote Body. Now that I think about it. Yeah, I'm thinking that it may be a little bit too far out. My greater trochanter may be a little bit too far out. 
So let's fix that real quick. Well, let's just roll with it. Let's 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 see actually if um, we can make it work. Let's see. Uh, see, so yeah, uh, Summit was, what, um, a couple months ago? <laughs> oh, the Zygote body, right. Let's take a look at that real quick. Z-Y-G-O-T-E body. Let's see. That's pretty crazy. Is there... How do you change the mail? Or can you? <clears throat> Is it only female or can you change the mail? For a zygote body, do you guys know? I just maybe want to be wary of uh, oh, adult male. There we go. I want to make sure because we we don't have a mature tag, so I want to make sure I'm not showing things that. Yeah. All right. Got it. Changed it to mail. Yeah, I don't. I just don't want to. Uh, Twitch is really uh, weird about showing different particular things during your stream. So, uh, when, in when it comes to anatomy, so I uh, like trying to be careful. You think chat's not acting right? Why not? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? All right. So let's grab this. We're going to go into. Okay. So this is all very, very thin. Oh, the pill. Okay, gotcha. I was wondering what the pills were for. So let's turn off. I get you. Okay, cool. Let me, let me get a second there. I don't need vascular. Alright, let's do this then. So we don't need nervous. We don't need vascular. Let's put on bones. There we go. And then we can look at muscles too. Yep. Cool. So yeah, so this is what we're doing here, right? So we got the vastus uh, lateralis medius uh, and rectus femoris. Those are all the joint. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, making a skeleton is 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 good too. <clears throat> I think it really it comes down to how much time you have. There we go. Okay. So yeah, that's what we're looking at right here. So the Sartorius comes down <coughs> behind uh, the vastus uh, medius there. Cool. Yeah, that Death Stranding was weird. I think the Death Stranding was more weird than anything. Awesome looking, but damn. Weird, man. Weird. Okay, so this is going to come more this way. <coughs> okay. So, let's 
Maybe this is going to be a little bit bigger here. Like so. This one is going to taper out a little bit more. Be a little bit more inflated through here. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> he's a legend, but damn, dude, he's got some weird freaking ideas, man. Jiminy. Jiminy. Alright. So I'm just gonna kinda knock all this stuff down. Okay, so that's going to connect up here. It's going to come down and around. And connect down here. Right? Actually, it's going to actually come over and it actually connects all the way down here. I actually still have yet to play any Metal Gear. I think mostly because um, I wasn't really a fan of like sneak around games. I think I think where, where the Death Stranding lost me was the was the uh, baby thumbs up in the throat. I was like, what? <laughs> what the fudge is this? I think that's where it lost me. I think the the other part too was like he was like, don't 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 breathe a breath, or be quiet, and then like his little thing was like, I'm like dude, if you're trying to be quiet, like shut your thing up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just like, dude. Um, okay. <laughs> don't, don't breathe a breath. Be very quiet. But shut your thing up at the same time. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so I'm just going to flatten a little bit of this out here. You have any uh, sculpture models on your desk? Use for reference? Uh, yes, I actually do. Um, I've got. Let me see this one. This one. This one. The female one from. Um, okay, who this is from? AnatomyTools.com. So yeah. This one, this one I use a lot, um, but I, obviously it's for uh, female. <laughs> but yes, um, I try to have as much visual reference as I can uh, without it being too over the top. Okay, something like that. Let's actually take and just kind of... Again, um, I'm not trying to make the most accurate model. Um, I try to keep this in mind a lot, and it really is tough <coughs> for me, is that I always I always try to like make everything like, oh, i got to make this perfect. just got to make it amazing. But then I, I try to uh, bring it back and say, you know what, I, this is just for my own study. Like, I don't need to... I'm not making like a, a production model or anything, um, so I don't have to get too crazy. You know what I'm saying? And it's a good thing to remember too when you're doing this for just a study. Try to keep in mind of why you're actually doing it. You know, and don't get don't get too lost in the details, because I tend to do that a lot. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, we'll come back and adjust the, the tube snake look um, towards the end. Actually, you know what? Some of that stuff is actually pretty bothersome. So I'm going to try to fix it now instead. I lied. So alt um, inflate is really nice. I like doing that. It's always cool. Um, sometimes you can actually come in here and just flatten some of this down. A lot of times it's not as circular as what your tube snake looks like. It's working cold white. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? Just kind of flatten some of this stuff out a little bit. A little bit more shape. Good, excellent, excellent, welcome. Again, paying attention to um, the silhouette. All right, so Medius probably down here a little bit more. You just got ZBrush Core? Congratulations. Welcome to the family. That's awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Let the amazingness commence and congratulations. Alright, so um, Outers, uh, most outer side of the silhouettes up here, uh, again for the inside in here, uh, down here. All right. Okay. Let's keep, let's continue moving. Um, the, uh, I'm not going to worry about the adductors yet. Uh, the adductors are this group of muscles on the inside, which are these ones here. Or if you're looking in here, let's look at. A doctor, a doctor, there we go, a doctor. These ones, right? It's a um, kind of group of muscles uh, on the inside that kind of make up this extra around. Uh, yeah, I actually have three monitors. Um, how many monitors are you working on? There you go. Um, I am. Um, uh, I I worked on two monitors for a long time, um, and then I realized that I really needed another one so I got another one so now I have a uh, reference monitor um, a Netflix monitor and a working monitor <laughs> um, and I'm on, I'm on a Intuos 5 medium I think medium yeah Intuos 5 medium touch but I never use the touch stuff so Okay, um, let's focus on uh, the hamstrings real quick. So we'll look at the hammies. The hammies. Okay, um, a couple of ma the major muscles of the hamstrings. Um, <coughs> these ones are uh, set into two majors, which are the uh, semitendinosius, which is actually this one here, semitendinosius. Um, and then the uh, biceps femoris. So they're going to go up and let's see if we can get a look at where they insert. So on the inside of the leg is the semitendin osseus. It comes down and circles around um, through the knee. The biceps femoris is pretty much mirrored on the other side. right? And then they come up and they it looks like they connect to the inside of oh, see if we can get a better connection point here let's see let's see 
Uh, here's another good one for the Sartorius. Oh, let's take it off a of ductor, that's why. Uh, cold white. Uh, yes. So, yeah, basically what I'm doing is um, I am usually just have this on this screen so you guys can see what I'm looking at, but I'll usually just throw this on the other screen. Okay. So, um, I'm going to actually just start from another insert mesh. So, we'll do brush, I for insert, and we'll come into uh, IMM primitives. Again, we'll just take a, um, a sphere. And again, if you guys are uh, new to ZBrush, um, my interface is pretty crazy. So don't don't be um, intimidated by it. Basically what I do is I just take out all the things that I use from my the tool palette, going all the way down, and then just I throw it out here. And then this is just, uh, you know, materials and lighting information, uh, symmetry, uh, depth, uh, some gravity, topological stuff, uh, camera stuff. Um... Yeah, and then some other things that I that I use all the time, like Dynamesh, um, that I like having up just to see if something's on or not. Um, that's another big thing, right? Is, do I have Dynamesh on now? Does Live Booleans on? Um, and then some visual stuff like Solo, Transparency, Polyframe, that kind of stuff. Anyways, um, okay, so let's do Insert. So let's grab this dude. Um, we're just going to go... Insert there, and then what I do is uh, split unmasked points. What exactly is Dynamesh? I'll show you. So um, let's go to this one. So topology basically um, is it, it's uh, Dynamesh is just a retopology, basically. <clears throat> so what? All right. This is a, a lesson on Dynamesh. So let's say I want to make this into a particular shape. I'm like, okay, let's let's do the thing. Let's get that into position. All right, let's like do that. Okay, maybe it's kind of like that, you know. Um, but if I want to uh, let's say if I want to you know, move this around. If I start doing this, right, I'm I'm still controlled by uh, the topology that's in there. So instead of being bound by that topology, I could say, you know what, I don't really care about topology at this point. So what Dynamesh does is it goes and um, takes a particular value and re-meshes whatever you have up there, right? So basically what it does is it says, okay, at that resolution, I'm just going to create more. Right, and then you can like move stuff around more. Then you have that same issue, right? But then you could just redynamesh again, and then do the thing. And you're like, okay, I'm running into the same problem. Okay, we'll just redynamesh. So basically, it um, it keeps a uh, consistent amount of uh, polys for your crazy shapes. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, technically it's adding more. The 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 larger and more intricate your um, your shape, then yes, it will be. But ZBrush can handle all kinds of crazy amounts. So, like, so if we're moving this around, so this is a really good time to use. Uh, Dynamesh, because you're really kind of moving the shapes around, try to figure out what you're do, what you're gonna do. Like, let's take this down here. Let's inflate this in here. Right, and I don't want like all this stuff happening, so just redynamesh it. Um, redynamesh is just uh, the same as clearing a mask, so just uh, control drag and. Sh Uh, control and uh, uh, drag out. So it's very, 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 very helpful, especially when you're just uh, kind of getting 
um, everything set up, if I may. Oh yeah, I, it gets it gets crazy. Uh, at the end, uh, at the end of the show, uh, which is at about an hour and fifteen minutes, um, I'll show you guys uh, the one of the last models that I did um, that pretty much finished up. It's a full character. I'll show you guys just to give you guys uh, some of the the new peeps um, an idea of some of the things that you can do in terms of crazy amounts of detail. Okay, so this is going to be um, semi-tendon osseous. Here we go, semi-tendon osseous. Um, oh, it's actually, it actually looks like it's connecting to uh, actually the hip. And the biceps from Mars looks like it comes up and uh, connects there too. Oh, okay, well, let's, just, let's just have them go there for now. Um, so this goes over, this comes down and over. Um, I do have a Discord. It's it's old and nobody's really on it anymore. Um, when I was uh, streaming more full time, uh, it was definitely it was definitely going, but I I don't really have anything on it anymore. So this is actually going to connect to the this part of the hip. Okay. Alright, let's do that again. Um, so we'll grab, go back to this one. We'll do brush B and then I for insert. Gonna go ahead and grab that guy again. We'll drag this guy out. We'll do split unmasked points. Go back to this guy. And then we'll go ahead and do that same thing. Um, we'll just dynamesh and then we'll start using the move brush to bring this guy up this way. So now you know you guys are familiar with what's going on with uh, the topology. Now I can just turn that off for now. Again, so this is just for studying. I'm not going to go too crazy on all the detail. It's really just helping me remind myself of um, of what goes where and why certain forms are happening on the body. No, I don't name my subtools. Um, and that one I'm just kind of just doing practicing. I, honestly, I hardly ever go into um, in here. I hardly ever do. I usually just use Alt-Click to go to different uh, subtools. Alt click. What's up, Peter? How you doing, buddy? Good morning, sir. Um, so for for this particular one, um, oops. for this particular skeleton, I'm using the one that actually comes with ZBrush. Uh, this is the Ryan Kinsling. Uh, if you go under Tool, under Lightbox, Tool, Ryan Kinsling Anatomy. Um, Subtools are kind of like layers. So, um, if I look at polyframe here, right, so that's a layer. That's a layer. These are all the subtools. So basically, they each subtool has their own history. Um, yeah, and they act independent from the other tools. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get this guy back towards what he is supposed to be doing. It's way too big at the moment. How you doing, Peter? What's up, buddy? Hey, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, man. It's it's important, you know, as, as much as you uh, do them or as much as you think you know, you never, you're never done uh, 
learning anatomy, you know? Once you once you get the basics down, then you start going into variations, you know? Um, I also like to encourage people to check out bodiesinmotion.net? No, dot .org, I think is what it is. Um, it's the Scott Eaton website. So I'm going to plug this real quick. Uh, bodies, bodiesinmotion.photo is actually what it is. Um, this one is really, really amazing. Scott Eaton's a, a amazing anatomy instructor. Um, and he put together this whole website uh, based on uh, muscles in movement, basically. So seeing what muscles do in different poses and in different um, crazy stuff, right? So once you once you learn all of the anatomy and where things are, like this is next level stuff, right? This how do how do uh, muscles move? How do they stretch? How do they um, interact with each other? What do those shapes look like in different positions? You know what I mean? There's a whole nother level. Whole nother level. So like I said, you're never finished. <laughs> yeah, great for animation. Great for animation. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. So that's why I say <coughs> when um, anatomy's never done, there's always another step to go. You know what I mean? It only helps you uh, understand more. So I try, I try, probably maybe once a year to to go back and do um, studies like this. Uh, I try to force myself to do it, but sometimes I have the time, and other times I don't get around to it. But it worked out this time because um, I was actually in between projects uh, for streaming on this channel. So it worked out perfectly. I was like, hey, you know what? I need to go back and do my anatomy stuff. Perfect. Two birds with one stone. Yay. Body motion to photo. Thank you, Siegel. Yes. Highly, highly recommend that. Um, if you can donate or support him uh, financially, highly suggest it too. That guy is amazing. Um, and he's been doing great stuff for the industry. Great guy. Okay. <coughs> so the basics are um, you have semi tendinosus, and then you have biceps femoris. Right? Those become your hamstrings. Something like that. All right. Let's take a look back at the leg anatomy. And you got another small one that comes down here. I'm not going to worry about that one at the moment. Okay, do, 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 do. what else we got? Um, just for the moment, just to complete the knee, I think we'll go ahead and uh, do the gastrocnemius um, and then have that kind of come in here. So we'll do the gastrocnemius uh, for both side, both lateral and medial head and then have that come down into uh, the Achilles heel just to kind of round out what the knee is doing. Okay, again, so uh, we're going to do B for brush, I for insert, go over to insert primitives. Just going to grab my um, sphere, and let's just go ahead and drop this guy in there. We'll do split unmasked points, go back to this dude, rotate this guy around, kind of get just the major in there uh, on both windows and mag. Um, I, I'm I am not sure uh, about a lot of, a lot of that stuff. Um, pretty sure there's a Mac version. Not sure, um, but I do know that with full ZBrush, um, you have you can install your license on two different machines. I don't I don't know for ZBrush Core or for any of that stuff. That would be more of a, a Pixel Logic support question. So let's just get major form down here. Um, I'm I'm sure they're usually pretty cool. Um, 
and fairly flexible so if you're really nice to them <laughs> they may I don't know they, it may be two completely different licenses for the operating system so I'm not sure I know for for PC um, you can install it on two different computers Mega calves. Look at those calves. Go go. <laughs> All right, let's do. Actually, I don't think I need that much. Let's turn this down to 100. <laughs> yeah, you you get a second license, but I I don't know if um if that's across different um, operating systems or not. It would be awesome, but I, I'm not sure. Okay, so what this is going to do is... Let's actually just bring this in. That's a little bit more like it. I'm just going to pull this out this way. Not really worried about uh, what the geometry is doing. A little bit too, a little much, a little much. But I do want to bring so this actually are these are going to duck in. This way. Two copies per OS, yeah. That's kind of what I thought. What's up, JK Sean? Jackie? Jackie Sean? I always slaughter people's Twitch names, so I apologize. Like, always slaughter it. <laughs> Bankson, yeah, you got it. Okay, so this is going to come up and around. This is going to duck in underneath, right? So this goes around this way. This one goes around that way, basically. Internal sections is available in Mega Windows, yeah. Um, when are you planning next steps uh, on your character for your personal stream? Can you record and keep the videos on your stream? Different time zones. Um, Pedro, good question. Very good question. Um, I think honestly, it's probably going to be a little bit, a little while before I can get to it. Um, just started a new job, and I don't have a whole lot of personal time anymore. Um, I have full intentions of doing it. I just don't know when I'm going to have time, but. Uh, the idea will be that um, I will keep those videos uh, on my Twitch channel and uh, on my YouTube channel. So I will keep the replays so that if anybody's interested, they can go back and watch them. Thank you very much, man. Thank you very much. Overneath. <laughs> was it Overneath? I think it was Overneath, right? Overneath. These go Overneath. That was awesome, dude. That was awesome. Okay, and then we're just going to kind of divide this up just a little bit so we get a little bit more shape in here. Shape in here. Okay. This one goes down here, this one kind of goes like that. And then the, these will go... This will just flatten the hell out. You flatten the hell out! Oh, thank you very much, Pedro. On the ball, man. On the ball.
Alright. So that's going to go down there. Okay, anyways. So that's what um, uh, the majority of the gastrocnemius is doing. All right. so that's how you kind of get like this this nice incoming and outgoing movement through the uh, through the hamstrings. We're going to work on shape a little more. a little bit better and I think this one's gonna come out a little bit gonna come down so it's important to to still um, consider your silhouettes okay that's looking closer to legs Okay, cool, cool. Okay, I think let's talk about um, the buttocks, the gluteus medius, gluteus maximus. Those are always a little bit fun. And then we'll do the adductors. Yeah, and we'll continue from there. Yeah, things are good. Oh, we're only halfway through it too. Okay, <clears throat> so let's look at gluteus medius and gluteus maximus. Leg anatomy. Gluteus maximus. Okay, here's gluteus maximus. And let's actually look at gluteus medius. See if gluteus medius is on here too. That one's important. Gluteus medius. There it is. So gluteus medius um, goes in between. This one's easy. It goes in between the greater trochanter and uh, fills in under the hip. Meow. So this is another good one. So gluteus maximus, um, again, fills out from the greater trochanter all the way down through um, the back, and the gluteus medius um, is down through there. So we can get <coughs> some other decent ones here. Butts. That's nice, but... So direction is super important when you're doing gluteus. Oh yeah, we got to talk about the iliotibial band as well. This IT band that comes down here. That'll be the finishing one though. Okay, so we'll do gluteus medius. We'll do that, which goes underneath that. Um, we got to figure out what this one is. Yeah, it's a really really good exercise, L like literally. Okay, gluteus medius. Okay, let's do that. Medius. Okay, again, uh, I'm just going to go back here. We're going to go B for brush, I for insert. Go back to my primitives here. I'm just going to drop this bad boy in there. We're going to do split unmasked points. If you guys are interested, split unmasked points is in subtool, split, split unmasked points. Um, the, the thing to note is that when you do insert, um, whatever you whatever subtool you insert on um, after you do the insert uh, it will mask everything else except for what you just inserted so that's why I'm doing split unmask points because um, it works really well in conjunction with that okay so then we go back to this subtool and then let's do it um, yeah sculpture helps with drawing um, honestly I think there's 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 a lot of kind of, I wouldn't say debate, I'd say a lot of questions that I get of, you know, is drawing better or should, should I sculpt or should I draw? Um, ultimately, it comes down to what you want to do and what you feel comfortable with and what do you have access to. 
Um, honestly, like I, I think drawing is really good because you can get things. Um, you know, if you're if you haven't done a whole lot of sculpting, um, you know that may inhibit you from getting things done quicker. You know what I mean? Um, so a lot of times people still draw because it's a lot quicker to figure things out. Um, especially if you're not doing things in 3D. Um, but if you're comfortable in 3D, then I say do 3D. Especially if you're going to be a sculptor or a character artist or something like that. <coughs> um, I think for me right now, drawing is mostly just, uh, e like, am I near my, s my computer? Can I, you know, do I have, do I have the ability to do things at my computer? Then I'll do, I'll do sculpting. If I'm not at my computer and I still want to study, then I'll bring a sketch, sketch pad with me, you know? I can still figure things out and practice and stuff. Okay, gluteus medius, all right? Gluteus medius. Now we're going to do gluteus maximus. Okay. Uh, gluteus maximus will uh, connect here. Um, and I think connects... Let's see, where does it connect? It goes down the sacrum, it looks like. Gluteus maximus. Let's look over here again. So gluteus medius, got it. Okay. Gluteus maximus. So it connects through the ilium uh, and then goes down and connects uh, to the sacrum right here. Yeah, I don't really worry about ligaments too much at this point, um, mostly because um, the, the, the fundamental reason why I'm doing this is to understand the forms underneath the skin. So a lot of times the ligaments won't give you form, it's really the muscles that do. So that's why I don't really, I don't really worry about ligaments um, in my own studies. Again, if this was a production model, then yes, I would definitely do those. Um, in this particular point, I'm really just worried about the form-defining muscles underneath the skin. <clears throat> so here, so it'll go across here, and then through the sacrum, and then down to the greater trochanter, and it looks like um, the femur there. Yeah, definitely put you in a different mind state. I mean, it's really about ease of uh, access, you know. I think it's still important to be able to draw. Um, it's just like fundamentals, you know. Um, I don't think that it's quite as necessary anymore, um, now that we have, uh, great digital sculpting packages, um, but it, it really depends on what you're doing, you know, if you're going to be an illustrator, yeah, you better know how to draw. <laughs> if you're going to be a concept designer, you better know how to draw. Um, yeah. All right. Bruh, B, I, grab my primitives, drop this dude in here, split unmasked points, alt click on that guy, move tool, let's just get this in there. Um, it, you can also talk about, you know, like, well, if you're doing sculpting, should you do traditional sculpting? Uh, you, you don't have to, um, but I think there is a, a lot of benefit to, um, being able to wrap <clears throat> your perception around a 3D image in real space versus translating that to wrapping your brain around uh, 3D structures in virtual space. Um, I started doing uh, ZBrush a lot, and then I actually um, got back into traditional sculpting, and it helped my ZBrush, uh, just, my, just the overall awareness um, a ton, a ton. Just understanding what shape and form is actually doing in three dimensions 
Super, super important. Hey, what's up, Ratchet Claddy? Head, head's all bone. It looks goofy. Dude, the, the skull is the most incredible bone. Like, just the functions that it has, and like all the nooks and crannies, and it's crazy. Uh, similar to the scapula, actually. The scapula is such a crazy bone. Crazy bone. So sometimes uh, before I dynamesh, I like um, using the direction of uh, the polys um, and using the poles of that sphere as the insertion points. Sometimes it's just it's just much easier to kind of get that flow going before you dynamesh. Just um, understanding um, the flow of the fibers. Can be very helpful. Can be very helpful. Okay. We're getting there, ladies and germs. What's in your opinion between ZBrush and 3D Coat? Um, I think each one has its uh, has its benefits. Um, but if you're talking about uh, strictly just sculpting um honestly i'm i i'm hands that not you know not just because i'm streaming on pixelogic's channel <laughs> but uh honestly I, I i think uh zbrush has has a uh, beat hands down just being able to all the different things that you can do uh with like alphas and and uh you know, Dynamesh versus, um, you know, Array Mesh and all that stuff. For me, um, I'm a ZBrush heavy guy. What's up, Hugo? How you doing, buddy? Alright, now I think we could do... There we go. So you see how sometimes you really lose that flow when uh, you're doing... Uh, when you use Dynamesh. So sometimes I like to come back in and just kind of sculpt this up a little bit. Try to get just some of the directionality back to the flow of the muscle fibers as well as pulling out some of that um, some of that shape again. Again, all right, so this is going to actually come down here more. <laughs> okay, gluteus maximus, gluteus medius. How much time have you lost? Um, we're an hour and 15 minutes in. We've done all of the leg muscles so far, from uh, the hips down. Okay, let's talk about ilial tibial band. Actually, you know what? There's one other muscle in here. Let me see if I can find it. So like there's like all these internal ones too, or like the gluteus minimus, gluteus medius, gluteus maximus. I'm really just kind of interested in the me the outer ones, like the um, orbiter internus. Like I'm never gonna see that when I'm drawing something, like drawing a, a body, right? Never gonna see that. Not too worried about it. Um, so gluteus medius, gluteus maximus. Uh, that one's underneath. Okay. So. Again, that's why I'm not really worried about these holes, because um, a lot of internal smaller ones um, are in there. So let's do the adductors, um, which is the ones that make up this shape here. And then let's just do that as a as one big shape. So if we look at 
the adductor group. Where was the adductors? I think I have to go back to leg thigh muscles. It's basically these ones right here. There was a good one in here. I forgot where it was. If I don't find it, we're just going to move. We're going to move. All right, it's all these ones here. So I'm just going to fill that in because um, it's a couple of different muscles in there <coughs> connecting to different parts, but I'm really just interested in the overall shape for this particular study. So let's grab this. Let's do B for brush, I for insert. Go grab this. Let's throw this guy in there. We'll do split unmasked points. I'll click on that guy. Turn on the move tool. Okay. Let's, oops, move tool. That's what I want. There we go. This is basically what it's doing. Right, we've got all this interconnected little muscles and stuff in here. Right, so that's where you get like this nice like kind of like curve inset and then long curve down through the knee. Right. And you know it's a it's personal preference. Um, <coughs> if you decide that you'd like to know all those, go ahead and figure them out. Put them in. You know. Uh, for me, I'm just worried about that shape. So that's what I'm gonna do. There we go. Easy peasy. Uh, how long have I been using ZBrush? Um, I've been using ZBrush f pretty heavily since um, late 2013. So about four years now. Let's actually bring this up in here. Up in here? Up in here. All right, let's dynamash that bad boy. All right, I think the Sartorius is actually going to come up a little bit further this way. This guy is going to inflate a little bit more this way. So, um, and you'll see like why I usually wait until I get all the form-defining muscles in to start really making sure that uh, all the forms are looking good. It's really there, it's about like the relation in between each other. <laughs> Alright, so I've got this nice flow coming down through here. Yeah. Okay. Let me see what else we got. Oh, here's <clears throat> here's another good image of the adductors, right? So we got all these um, adductor longus, longus magnus. Um, all these internal ones, right? So that's that's basically the um, that shape. <laughs> Where'd you get the hat from? Uh, the hat was actually I got at the ZBrush Summit. They had a little station for um, selling dope stuff. So the tensor is the, actually the one that I'm looking for right here. So there's one that actually comes down. Let's look at the tensor medial. Yeah, that's the one uh, I really am interested in right now. Because that's going to fill out this right here. It's going to help fill that out. And then uh, we'll do the iliotibial band that comes all the way down to the knee. So let's look at the tensor. Tensor of fascia lata. Fascia lata. Let's go anatomy tensor fascia lata. <laughs> okay, tensor fascia lata. Okay. Okay, okay. So that actually goes right into the iliotibial band. It's interesting. 
Hmm. Okay, so we'll do the same. We'll we'll do the ileal tibial band, which comes uh, on the outside, um, on top of everything, connects to the the iliac crest, comes all the way down, and then goes down to your uh, tibia. A long, flat, bad boy. And then we'll just uh, include the fascia lata in there. Fascia lata. Okay, so let's grab this dude. We'll give beef a brush, eye for insert, grab from primitive. I'm gonna drop that guy on there. We'll do split unmask, alt click, <clears throat> and then we'll move. Um, mostly from uh, Latin, actually. Mostly Latin names. Like vastus lateralis. Right? Vastus is the shape. Lateralis is the position. Um... Yeah. Okay, so let's let's actually have this come up here. All right, so the, the ileal tibial band comes all the way down, and this is really it's not form defining, um, but it's important for kind of encasing everything together. So I like to include it in my own studies because it's it's actually a pretty important um, piece of the anatomy to finish off the leg. Um, let's actually, I'm going to hide this guy for a second, and I want to flatten out this gluteus medius here. Flatten that bad boy out a little bit. <clears throat> Vastus medius. What's my perspective set to? Uh, right now it's just 50. I don't, I don't really worry about it too much. I mean, it's just 28, I think, if I was going to do something a little bit more real. Sorry, I missed your, uh, I missed your quote there. Your question. Question. Always with the questions. God, it's like I'm doing a demonstration or something. <laughs> ah, plan. Okay. So this is going to go all the way up there. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Let's just flatten this out a little bit. Yeah, I did see that trailer. Um, I did. I can't. I mean, I get it. It's from. Um, it's from anime, but I can't get over the eyes, man. I can't. I. I can't do it. It just. From especially from like a a character like anatomy mindset, I just. I can't, I can't do it, man. <laughs> I can't do it. The eyes freak me out. Freak me the heck out. Um, I thought, I thought the, I, I, I don't know the IP. Um, I'm interested that, um, of the of the actors that are in it and who's who's uh, been involved in you know producing and stuff. Uh, flattening the mesh just by using either Trim Dynamic, Flatten, or H Polish. Yeah, I can't. I just can't, I can't get over the eyes, man. Can't. It just can't do it. Yeah, I saw the Death Stranding one, man. I I don't know, man. That lost me at the baby in the throat, giving the thumbs up. Like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Like, oh, we're doing something different. You're like, no, nah, it's just weird. Don't do that, man. I'm like, cool, you had me until the baby with a thumbs up. <laughs> but yeah, um, for Anita, that... Anita? Is that what it was called? Anita? 
Alita. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, um, you know, I, I probably will still go get it, uh, go see it, because I, um, I think it's important to go out and spend money on new IP movies that are interesting, um, even if, even if, you know, you don't necessarily like them, it's just to, to help get new blood out there, you know, it's not always just the same superhero movie. I felt the same way for, like, uh, Jupiter Ascending, those types of movies. Yeah, I don't think it was the best movie, but, um, like, Ghost in the Shell, um, Jupiter Ascending definitely wasn't the best movie, but I hands down went and, and saw it, because I want, I want to see more stuff like that, that are different from all the, all the, uh, cut and paste stuff that's out there now. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, so it looks like Gave you chills, huh? Uh we're talking about a little bit of both. What's up, Bacon? How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Kinda going back and forth on both. Okay, Ilio Tibial Ban. Um so that's this is going to go... This way, it's kind of going to go into... The gluteus medius area as such. <clears throat> and the fascia lata is actually going to be here. So we'll just kind of include that. Let's turn on back face mask. There we go. Never watch movies you don't like. How do you know if you don't like them if you don't go see them? Haha. -ha. How about that, huh? Oh, what's going on? Oh, that's move. That's why. How do you know if you don't like them if you don't go see them? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, for me, it was the same thing as um. Uh, what was that? Uh, ver what the hell was it called? Um, it's from the dude that made uh, Fifth Element. Ver 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 something or other. <laughs> ver Verilliant. No. The hell was that called? It just came out not too long ago, like six months ago. Valerian. Ah, oh, bless your heart. Thank you, Indy. Yes, Valerian. Um, I, I mean, I really, really loved uh, Fifth Element, so I, I saw it because I, I enjoyed that art style. Um, but I also want to see more movies like that. You know, I want to see different stuff. So I think for me, and you guys could do whatever you want to. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, for me, I I try to go and and see those movies a lot to show my support for different IPs and stuff. Well, I want to see different stuff. I don't want to see just another a uh, you know superhero movie. I want to see more stuff, more stuff. Uh, Valerian wasn't the best movie in the world. Dark City was pretty cool. Pretty trippy, but pretty cool. Yeah, I mean there were some there was some really cool stuff. I don't know about you know the whole story and you know acting or whatever, but man, there were some really cool ideas in that movie. In Valerian. Okay. 
All right, so fascia lata we got in through there. We got the ileal tibial band that comes down there. Now we can really start kind of moving things around a little bit more. Um, I'm going to look back at the thigh to make sure. We'll start getting things into better proportion here. Okay, like this. I think we can... This could be much bigger. Alright. Now it's now it's time to make things more proportionate. Alright. Let's redynamesh. Now we start kind of I feel I'm missing something important. I man, I was trying to get to to Blade Runner, but my schedule just didn't let me do it. I'm really pissed that I didn't get to see that in the theater. Really pissed off at myself for that one. Really, really wanted to see that. I'll have to catch it on um, Blu-ray or something when it comes out. <laughs> yeah, those sculpts are really helpful. Especially when it comes down to this stuff, like the finalizing and all that fun jazz. And just for just every day, like, oh wait, how did that muscle go and do that? Oh yeah, that's right. And remember, it always looks like crap until it doesn't look like crap. <laughs> so keep working. Uh, no, I'm using just a, a regular um, uh, Intuos 5. You still haven't seen Wonder Woman? Oh, that was actually really good. Wonder Woman was was awesome. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Dunkirk was good too, yeah. Um, really have issues with the corner of eyes. I did some head scans and I'm trying to clean up the garbled noise around the eyes. It was frustrating. Yes, it's very frustrating. I 100,000% agree. One hundred thousand percent agree. It's tough. <laughs> the fascia lata actually. Okay, let's do this. All right, I'm gonna kind of take a look at these muscles again here because I feel like um, they're all kind of out of whack. So. I'm going to do the majority of the bulk of this muscle here. I'm just going to pull this back in. Okay, and then this. Probably, I'm just going to use the alt inflate to kind of bring this back in a little bit. Alright, so the majority of this muscle is up here. This one really comes down, goes into the patella. Like so. 
Again, I'm looking at um, the silhouette. Silhouette for these. Right, you can actually look at, at legs as well from like the profile and see where like you like again we have that kind of alternating um shape and where they come out the most. All right, getting there, we're getting there. The Valley of Suck, yes, to quote Mr. Ryan Kinsling. Okay, I'm gonna actually, um, I'm gonna actually make the Fasciolata its own thing and leave the ileal tibial band as separate here. <laughs> yeah, we can use images and stuff. Um, a lot of times I'll use, actually, <coughs> if I have a good one, and I want to actually see it, a lot of times I'll just use this see-through instead of actually setting up a plane. I'll use just this see-through real quick and just go, all right, it might kind of in the ballpark. You know, where am I sitting? In terms of where my knee where my knee is. I'm all pointing to the screen. You guys can't see my screen. Jeez. Alright, so where the knee joint is and where the hips are. You're like, yeah, you know what? I could probably use a lot more out here. So sometimes I'll just I'll just actually grab and just you know, let's Let's make this a little bit bigger. Alright. This stuff actually comes out like this. That booty. Boom, chicka boom, chicka boom, chicka boom. Right? So yeah, sometimes I'll just I'll just use this method like super quick just to get overall proportions and stuff. So knee Right, so again I'm looking at, you know, where um the mo outermost point of this curve is versus where the outermost point of this curve is, right? And I may, yeah. <laughs> it's all with a grain of salt though too, like, I may not like this particular one, like, you know, those uh, proportions. No, nope, not Spotify. Thank you. You know, I may look at something like this. I feel like that's a little bit better. You know? Do something like that. Then just work on... Structure. Alright. You know, maybe my abdomen is way too, you know, it doesn't come out enough. Yep. 
maybe my pecs need to come out more. All right. Well, I, what I tend to do is get muscles in place first, um, and then start working on um, proportions. All right. Now I'm looking at overall proportions. Yeah. Yeah. Let's look at. Uh, I should probably save this too. <coughs> Saving's important. If you're uh, working on something now, you should save it. Save it. Yeah, it's coming along. Uh, we're going to do the fascia lata real quick. <laughs> You know, and again, you can spend, you know, a whole ton more time um, getting all the insertion points right. Uh, but what I what I found that I really uh, try to focus on is why why I'm doing this study. You know, am I am I doing this study for insertion points, or am I doing it to really nail down uh, what my shapes are and what's actually creating my shapes? Why, why do I see those forms under the skin? You know what I mean? And that's really the reason why I'm doing it. So, you know, are my, are the insides doing the right thing? Absolutely not. But what is are the outsides. The outsides. It's, one, it's what's on outside that's important. No, insides are important too. But I try to remember where my focus is um, and try to not to get lost um, in all the details because you could spend forever doing this. This looks like a sweet potato. I just realized that. Now I want a sweet potato. Uh, the transparency is just this um, tra uh, activate edit uh, transparency or opacity. You can find that under transform um transparent that one so I just um, so I, I do a couple of hotkeys that I find really important for flow so uh, V I use for solo shift V for um, transparency um, shift F obviously is wireframe so I go between those those three a lot whenever I'm navigating and, and looking around I do that a lot a lot Hey, look, it's starting to look like a dude. I'm a dude. Bro, I'm a dude. Except for the abs. Oh, man, look at those. <laughs> oh, the browser. Uh, that's up uh, this right here. This is just this see-through up here. What's up, pro? How you doing, buddy? What's up, what's up, what's up? Whoa. Move, let's do move. Doing alright, birthday and stuff. Nice man, happy birthday bro. Happy birthday broski. Brosep. <laughs> happy, happy birthday, man. Today <coughs> is your day. Along with everybody else that was born on this day. You can't be too greedy, man. God, quit being so greedy. Jeez. <laughs> I'm playing. Happy birthday, man. All right. Okay. I kept on saying I was going to do the fascia lata, but this time I'm actually going to do it. So 
So let's do that. Brush, insert. Brush, insert. Thank you. Let's just drop that on there. Split on mass points. I'll click, move tool. <laughs> this one is mine. Okay, so let's kind of get this dude into play. Okay, that's a little bit better. We got a little bit more connection going on there, which is good. And this goes actually down in and connects. And then we got ileal tibial band that comes up just over that. Again, I'm not worried about what's going on underneath. Just if you want, let's hide the ileal tibial band for now. Okay, that's good. Bring you back to the IT band. How's that for a happy birthday? Everybody up on Twitch be like, bro, happy birthday. Right? It's a good birthday present. Bunch of strangers going, dude, happy birthday, it's your day, bro. Right? Okay. Getting there. Okay, I think Sartorius needs to be a little bit bigger. I'm down through here. Free Dynamesh. Maybe let's put this up to 128 instead. You don't really see that muscle. It's more of just kind of flat going through there, but it really helps define this really like curvy movement that goes through the thigh. I need to just flatten it out a little bit so it's not too crazy. Something like that. Okay, you got legs, man. Meow. See if we can fix this up a little bit in here. Feel like this a little bit wider as it comes down. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate it. It's coming along, you know. So these are the things to to think about, right? When you're sculpting. I feel like his deltoids are pretty small. All right, we'll get up there. Get distracted. Quit distracting me. Put this up to 128. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Excuse me. Okay. That's pretty good. Maybe we'll get into the solace real quick and start busting out some of the uh the front end of the calf. Maybe we'll do that real quick. In the ten minutes we got left. Let's do that. Alright, so let's look at um doo -doo 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 -doo. let's look at the calf. Do 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 flash no flash a lot Let's go back. Oh. Lord. Uh, thigh muscles. No, oh, let's just do um, anatomy, uh, maybe let's do leg anatomy, leg anatomy, muscles, let's just do that, let's see what that brings us, that's good enough, alright, so, <clears throat> we're looking at a blurry image, get a better one, so this is the back, we already got that going, that's fine. Um, this one, I'll this one, I'll, I'll I'm gonna keep actually on uh, the ZBrush channel. Oh, what I did want to show you guys really quickly is the other one that I was uh, working on. So let's just say this real quick. Well, we got a couple minutes. Um, I'll just I'll, I'll I'll plug myself real quick. Let's save that. And then let's load. Um, it depends, uh, Pedro. Let me um, let me load up this this dude real quick, and then um, I'll tell you how I went about it. It really depends on the piece. Um, a lot of times, um, I'll default to let's see let's see here there he is so this is the guy that I was working on um, for a while um, somebody was asking about how detailed can you get in ZBrush and uh, the answer is very <laughs> some of the material work um, that I was that I was doing earlier <clears throat> so um, the process for this guy just in, in case any of you guys are interested um, I started with just a, a body scan so I took a scan from I think it was anatomy 360 um, which was this dude um, did a quick um, sculpt of the body type from him so right uh, again here so this is a really, really good opportunity to, to look at what we were just doing versus uh, what's going on here, right? So like we see triceps, um, you know, there's, you know, the forearm's messed up right now because I had to get it underneath um, the armor. But we got the biceps, you know, we got the triceps. Um, we have that nice plane difference between the deltoid and the pectoralis. Um, it's a little bit more fat material. But then we're looking at the legs, right? So uh, here's the adductors uh, that we were talking about. All right, we've got like this nice uh, insert, uh, like inner de um, curve going on. Right, we got the vastus uh, medialis coming in through here with just a little bit of fat there. Uh, this originally was a body scan. Yes, uh, the vastus lateralis that comes in here. Um, this one here is the gluteus, uh, the um, rectus femoris. We've got the hamstring muscles down here, which consist of the semitendinosus and the semitendinosus and the biceps femoris. Um, and we had right that nice um, like opposite curvature going on, right? So we got the curve coming here, 
curve here, curve here, curve here. And this is obviously messed up because um, I didn't really care about it at that point because I had that going on. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, we got some fat. We got gluteus maximus here. Yeah. So all those all those forms are super important, even just for like a quick sculpt, right? Knowing what your silhouette is doing, um, figuring out uh, proportions, all that fun stuff. So, anyways, I started from a body scan um, and uh, dynameshed. I think I dynameshed this. No, I subdivided it because I want to keep the UVs. Um, important thing to note is if you dynamesh something, you lose any UVs that were previously applied to it. Um, Anatomy 360 is where I got the scan from. So I did that, um, and then I got the head from the same same place, same body. Actually, I just split it apart. And then um, I went and sculpted the face to be a little bit more of the type of face that I wanted. Again, not anywhere near done, uh, but just a block out. Or was it 3D Scan Store? I don't remember. It was one of those two. Um, so then what I did was uh, I took and just extracted um, these pieces from the actual body. So once I had the body typed down, I could uh, fit the armor on top of them. And then I used Dynamesh um, and then retopologized them. All right, these ones have like low topology. Um, I just used Z Remesher for that. So I used Dynamesh first to get the shape, and then uh, Z Remesher to uh, get some decent topology. Once that happens, I subdivided it, uh, and then sculpted in all the details. So this is the one that um, I'm planning on continuing on my own channel, if you guys are interested in following me along. Um, it'll be somewhat sporadic, so uh, if, you're, if you feel inclined to follow me on my own channel, um, please feel free to. Uh, the next step for me is to continue breaking this guy down. Actually, you know what? Let me load the other tool. I already broke him down for retopology. So I'll show you how I did that real quick in the last couple of minutes that we have. So for retopology, um, the most important thing for retopology is just the overall shape. So I wasn't really um, worried about saving all of the small little details. So basically what I did was I came in um, and just, uh, what the hell is it called? In Z plugin right here, decimated. So I just used Decimation Master um, to get these down to basically just the shape with the idea that um, I'll be taking these out from here and doing just a hand retopology over over them. So I did that for all of these pieces. Depending on your topology too, you can actually use them uh, for your low poly if it works out that way. If not, then you can just do uh, retopologize. In this particular one, I actually have a good base mesh here. Um, I typically, personally at home, I retopo in, I retopo and UV in uh, Moto. I'm a Moto guy at home, mostly because it's a lot cheaper than Maya. So yeah, um, so I just broke this guy out into groups um, for retopo. Let's uh, look at tools. Not too many, right? So I've got this group. I've got the arms. I got the hair. I got the belt. I got the metal, which actually has pretty good topology already. So it's really helpful if you can keep uh, the base meshes and sculpt on top of it. So, uh, da, 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 da. then we got that piece, we've got the pants, and then we've got the boots. So from there, I would just um, export all these uh, as OBJs, bring them into Moto, and uh, start the retopology process. 
Then what I would do is I would go back to my full res and break these out into um, baking meshes, right? So then this one I would take probably with the strings or without the strings, I'm not sure yet. But I would take this one, um, maybe decimate it because it's sitting at 3.9 million polys. That's a little bit too much. So I'd probably just decimate this very, very sm like, very, just a tiny bit. Um, and then export that and then use that as a big mesh. So basically what I would do is I would take the, the final, um, the final mesh, save those out as two different ones. And then one I would create, um, the decimated, uh, retopology, uh, the decimated, uh, retopo export and then I would make uh, the bake mesh and then from there um, I would after I'm done with the retopology and the uh, UVing then I would bake them and be ready for texturing yeah uh, Hugo I'll probably I'll, I'll I definitely will will do that um, my my intention is once I have a little bit more time to be able to do personal streams um, and not Z ZBrush streams um that i will that that's my next step uh so definitely follow me on my own channel if you guys uh want to yeah, let me put this in twitch.tv and then i say uh i think that's it yep that's the one um so follow me there. Um, next step will be getting everything into Moto, um, setting up retopology, doing UVs, uh, and uh, we'll bake in, um, let me think of it, to bake in Marmoset Toolbag 3, and then uh, we'll do texturing in Substance Painter. That's the plan. I don't know how long it's going to take, but that's the plan. I want to get this guy actually in game. Uh, so it'll be fun. Cool. All right. Well, I think we did some good stuff today. We did some good stuff. Well, we were going to do the cast, but we ran out of time. What is baking in 3D? Um, baking means that you take these high res details, like on this piece. And then um, you actually, you want, uh, this one? yeah. So um, you can't have this many polys in the engine. So what you need to do is you need to have a low res mesh like this that will reflect the high res mesh details, right? So that's what baking means. So you set up UVs, and then you basically project the details that are on this high res. Um, down to um, the UVs that are placed on this mesh. And this mesh will be the one that you have um, in the actual game. That's, what ba that's the basics of baking. Yep, I'll be, uh, I'll be texturing this guy in Substance Painter. That's the plan. All right, ladies and Germans. Thank you very much for hanging out. We had a uh, we had a fun time with this guy. Um, I probably, well, I've got another stream in two weeks. Uh, <coughs> same bat time, same bat channel. Either we may pick up and finish this guy, or we may just do something completely different because I'm I feel like I'm. I mean, there's definitely a ton more to do to this guy. I got to totally fix his back and finish out his legs, do his forearms and finish the neck and the sartorius muscles and all kinds of stuff. There's stuff to do, but um, I think I'm pretty much done with the study for now. So, yeah. Um, two weeks from now, same bad time, same bad channel. Hope you guys had fun. Hope you guys learned a couple things. But most of all, I hope you're inspired to go make your own cool stuff. So do it. Study. Get that anatomy into your brain case. Just do it. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Have fun. Learn some shit. Talk to you guys soon.